In today's video, we're going to discuss the top 10 mistakes first-time Dogo Argentino owners make. Number 10, getting the wrong breed for your lifestyle. The Dogo Argentino is an incredibly strong and athletic hunting dog, and its number one need is vigorous, extensive daily exercise. So if your favorite hobby is Netflix and chill, this is not the breed for you. And a unwillingness to accommodate the dog's need for vigorous exercise is probably the number one reason that Dogo Argentinos are surrendered. Of course, a second reason is that they're very high maintenance in terms of their color. As you can see here, white Dogos don't stay white for very long. And so they need constant care in terms of keeping their white coat color, which many people do not wish to engage with. Additionally, because the Dogo is a guardian breed, many people do not realize the necessity of constant, early, and frequent socialization and obedience training. This is especially important with a powerful dog that can easily pull an owner off its feet. If, on the other hand, you lead an active, outdoor-oriented lifestyle, the Dogo Argentino is the perfect breed for you. If you're looking for a running companion, a hiking companion, a companion that will walk with you, the Dogo is willing to do all that and more. If you love to swim, if you're just an outdoor person in general, this dog will be a wonderful companion and a guardian in whatever outdoor activities you and your family enjoy. Of course, the Dogo Argentino is very much a family-oriented dog, and that's another reason that some people do not care for them, because they are really borderline codependent in terms of wanting to be with the family at all times and feeling extremely upset if they are separated. So this is not an independent breed. This is a very codependent breed. They truly want to be part of the action, part of the family, and they just don't do well if they're not fully integrated into your family life. I think that if you are a person that is looking for a dog to truly be your best friend, to be your shadow, the Dogo Argentino completely fits the bill. They love to be a part of every activity. You will never feel the need to be alone again once you accept a Dogo into your heart because they are fantastic companions and so incredibly loyal. The number nine mistake people make when getting a Dogo Argentino is seeking veterinary advice from the internet. If you have a veterinary problem, regardless of the scale, please seek an actual veterinarian's opinion. Unfortunately, you cannot get sound advice from the internet. If you see a red bump, if you see some sort of irritation, you just really need to go see a vet. People often try to save money because veterinarian bills are quite expensive and they'll seek opinions from people looking at a picture or looking at a video and that is just not really going to get you what you need. If your dogo suffers from some type of allergy or injury, you need to go have it looked at from an actual veterinarian because unfortunately anyone can give an opinion when they see a red bump but it's not likely to be very useful. Number eight, failure to exercise the Dogo's body and mind to the fullest is always going to end badly for the owner. Because if you don't exercise and stimulate your Dogo, chances are they're going to turn their excess energy to destruction. I have seen numerous pictures of Dogos on the internet who've destroyed couches, who have destroyed living room furniture, who have destroyed clothing, who have literally just created havoc in their owner's absence and it could all be avoided by management of the behavior and training of the behavior. So if you want to manage the behavior, you need to vigorously exercise your dog, you need to set boundaries, you need to train your dog early and often, and then you won't have a problem. If on the other hand you take your chances, chances are you're going to end up with some ruined stuff. This dog has an incredibly strong bite, 502 pounds of pressure per square inch. They can easily destroy a sofa quicker than you would think if you have not exercised them appropriately. So definitely stimulate your dog. Number seven, not properly feeding or watering your dog. Many 
dog foods have advice regarding the amount of food that should be fed on the back of the label. Unfortunately, this is for a non-existent dog that has a medium level of activity, not a highly athletic dog that has a very high level of activity. So I would ask your veterinarian what is appropriate based on your dog's activity level, age, and body mass so that you are not underfeeding your dog or underwatering your dog because they are true athletes. As athletes, their hydration needs, their caloric needs are certainly different than an average imaginary dog that the labels are designed to satisfy. Just as with an athlete or a long distance runner, the Dogo Argentino has high need for rich, wonderful, calorically appropriate food. Now, in my dogs, I tend to feed a biologically appropriate raw food diet and they get the occasional amount of kibble just to make sure I'm not missing any vitamins. But I really think that feeding a raw diet makes a tremendous difference in the growth and overall strength of your dog. I have seen dogs from litters that I've bred that are so different morphologically once they left my home and went to their new home. And, and I personally believe that that is entirely based on feeding them primarily a raw diet of muscle meat, organ meat, secreting organs, bone, connective tissue. Of course, bone always needs to be raw. And they do get some kibble. They get an extremely high level of kibble in terms of the quality. But once a dog is fed a raw diet, they just really don't like kibble. Uh, kibble is their last choice. They're like, oh, kibble, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. It's not something they would eat in the wild. And honestly, kibble has only been around for about 100 years and was fed out of necessity in terms of it being a cheap food to feed a dog. But it isn't, in my opinion, the best food to feed a dog. I think the best food is raw food and they get such an incredibly varied diet. They love it. Never underestimate the bad decisions other people will make. Mistake number six. Unfortunately, a lot of people make really bad decisions where their dogs are concerned. And what they'll do is they'll allow their dog to be off leash in a situation that it is inappropriate and they can't control their dogs. And I've been unfortunately involved in more than one dog fight because other people had their dogs off leash. My dog was on leash and that other off-leash dog came up and attacked me and my dog. Most recently, I had two American Pit Bull Terriers attack my adult on-leash female when we were on a street corner, not even near the yard of the people who had the dog. So you need to be prepared for other people's bad decision-making. It may affect you, even if you are doing the absolute best by your dog to not put it in a bad situation. Um, unfortunately, other people can compromise your plans because they just don't think ahead or they don't take seriously the uh, situation. Trusting your dogo knows the rules too soon. Mistake number five. This comes in play when you think your dog is 100% reliable and it just plain isn't. So this comes into play a lot in terms of potty training People will think their dogs are reliable, but the dog bladder takes six months to mature and it can't hold its waist like an adult prior to that. So if you trust your dog not to get into trouble in terms of pottying inside the house, you've got to make accommodations for the fact that that's a toddler and it's not going to be able to hold its waist for the same amount of time as an adult. People often trust their dogs before the behavior is truly well inseated inside your dog's mind. So one day it might not chew a shoe, and then another day it chews up your best shoes. Well, that's your fault because you put the dog in a situation and set it up for failure. You've got to make sure that the dog has structure. Mistake number four, not socializing early, often, and with variable circumstances. Anytime you want your dog to be accepting of a circumstance, you need to socialize and train it to do so. If you want your dog to be good with strangers, then your dog needs to meet lots of people early, often, and regularly throughout its life. If you want your dog to be good with other dogs, you need to socialize for that. You need to train for that. 
whatever circumstance you want your dog to be okay with, it has to be something that they have seen before in their life. Otherwise, being a guardian breed, they are likely to react with suspicion. The number three mistake I see is waiting to train until behaviors become a problem. So for example, when a baby puppy comes into your life and you allow that puppy to jump in order to receive affection when it first meets somebody, you think it's cute. Oh, look, the puppy's trying to get higher. He's trying to kiss my face. Well, if you don't train for that behavior, by the time the puppy is an adult between 85 and 100 pounds, if it jumps up, it can easily actually hurt a person, break a hip, break a bone. You need to train for that when the puppy is little, when the puppy is open-minded, when it hasn't developed adult judgment in it, will just better accept this is the way it is. If you wait until the behavior is an out of control problem, you are going to have a much harder time correcting that behavior. Mistake number two, not having everyone on the same page with what your training and socialization and family rules are going to be for your dog. If you want your dogo to not meet strangers and to be hostile to strangers, but another family member wants them to be super friendly to strangers, that's just not the way pack life works. Pack life tends to be very consistent in the rules and expectations of the pack member. If you have different family members using different commands, having different amounts of reinforcement, being generally very inconsistent in what they expect, that tends to produce a very unstable temperament in a dog because the dog doesn't know the rules. One time it's okay, another time it gets in trouble, sometimes the response is being yelled at, maybe the response is completely ignored another time. You really want to be consistent with your dogs so that they can be consistent with you. It makes your dogs happier because they understand what is expected of them each and every time. There's no question. When there's questions in their mind, they begin to question the leadership of the pack and they begin to behave in rogue ways outside the parameters of what you consider acceptable for your family and your circumstance. Don't do that to a dog. It's just not appropriate. Make sure everybody's on the same page. You know what you want. You know what you expect. You know what the commands are. Everyone will be happier. Mistake number one, letting a baby do things you would never allow from an adult. Babies bring the cuteness. They are ridiculously cute. A baby Dogo Argentino puppy will steal your heart and will manipulate you immediately into doing things that are inappropriate. So you've got to stay strong, you've got to stay consistent, and you can't let the cuteness win out. You have got to be the pack leader and you have got to set the rules and parameters for what you consider to be acceptable behavior in your particular home, in your particular circumstances. Do not be sucked in by the baby cute puppy looks. Don't allow the puppy kisses to sway you. You've got to stay strong so that your adult behaves in a way that was seated while the baby was new in your life. And even if you get a mature adult dogo, from the day you get it until the day it passes onto the rainbow bridge, you are teaching that dog what is appropriate in your particular life, in your particular family and circumstances. Don't be swayed by the cuteness. The cuteness will get you in trouble. You cannot tolerate things from a baby that you wouldn't want in an adult. So I see people all the time using their direct bare hand instead of an intermediate toy to play bite games with the puppy. And they're using the puppy's uh, prey instinct to have them attack their hand. That is one of the worst games you can play with a puppy. You do not want that. You want to use a toy because you don't want an adult coming up and nipping a hand because it wants to play. That's just inappropriate. So definitely make sure when you're thinking about doing something, is this something that I would accept from an adult dog? If the answer is no, you are under the spell of puppy cuteness and you need to break that spell and set good, clear, consistent boundaries so that your puppy can grow up happy, so that your puppy knows its place in your pack, so the puppy feels secure that there's leadership and it doesn't have to think, which is actually the preferred uh, pack mentality. They don't want to think. They want a leader who tells them what to do and when to do it. And this is a very pack-oriented dog. Thank you for listening to my video. Please like, subscribe, share, and 
followed. 